What's up YouTube? It's me Jess and I'm an opera singer. Today's video is Patron Pick of the Month and for this month they have chosen Josh Groban featuring Kelly Clarkson performing All I Ask of You from The Phantom of the Opera. Let's go. As of this video, 88% of viewers of this channel are not subscribed. If you enjoy this content, I kindly ask that you hit that subscribe button below. It tells YouTube that this channel is valuable and in turn allows me to produce more content. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Talk of darkness, forget these wide eyed fears. I'm here, nothing can harm you. My words will warm and calm you. Let me be your freedom, let daylight dry your tears. I'm here with you, beside you, to guard you and to guide you. I was so curious about this collaboration because of the style of music and the choice of singers. So, Phantom of the Opera, to me, leans more on the musical side of genres versus opera. That's just my interpretation, but I have heard other people call it an opera. I think the confusion does lie in just the title, and also there are some operatic qualities within the composition, but to me it's more of a musical. If you don't know the story of Phantom of the Opera, my god is it good. So let's catch you up to this moment where Christine and Raoul are singing and having their duet. This musical includes a prologue, and the prologue is set in 1911 at the Paris Opera House, also known as Ballet Garnier. The event is an auction that is holding vintage and valuable musical items. In attendance of this auction is Raoul. He's bought a thing or two. Uh, one thing he's bought is a musical box. In one of the lots, there is a broken chandelier and the auction employees tell the story of where the chandelier was and how it came to be broken. And they basically say it's involved in this mysterious story that involves the Phantom of the Opera. Now to showcase the chandelier, they turn on the lights and the overture of the actual musical begins. Now we are in Act 1. Act 1 takes place about 30-ish years before the prologue. And the very first scene is a live opera. In this live opera is Carlotta, who is the prima donna of the opera house. And as she is singing one of her arias, there's a malfunction going on in the background and it causes all of this chaos. And some of the choir people or the opera employees are saying, it's the Phantom, he's here, he's here. That's why this is happening. Carlotta, being the prima donna, storms off angrily. The employees of the opera want to keep the performance going because it's a sold out show. They don't want to disappoint their attendees. So someone suggests that one of the chorus girls, Christine, take over Carlota's position. Christine auditions quickly. She sounds beautiful and she gets the part. While she is singing, 
Raoul notices her and also recognizes that she is his childhood friend. When the opera is over, Raoul goes backstage and meets Christine. They reminisce of their childhood and Christine talks a lot about what inspired her to begin singing or hone in on her singing skills. And she describes this mysterious figure or person as angel of music. Raoul obviously has a crush on Christine, gives into this conversation, tries flirting with her a bit and asks her out. He then leaves and while he's gone, the phantom speaks to Christine and he tells her that he wants her to be the prima donna for all of his future compositions and specifically one that is going to premiere soon. He then convinces her to go down to his lair. Now the lair is described as this underground mysterious location. And to get there, you have to go underneath the opera house through like some sewage or something and you have to get on a boat. And then you pass like a body of water and then you're at his lair. Everything is underground. While they're down in their lair, Christine gets an image of her in some sort of bridal gown and the image moves and she freaks out and faints. And the Phantom of the Opera shows a soft side of him by placing her in bed and placing his cloak over her. Now a little bit of time passes and Christine wakes up and sneakily approaches the Phantom and takes his mask, revealing his disfigured face. He's upset, but then quickly gives in more to a softer side and explains how he longs for love, longs for a partner. She empathizes with him and he brings her back up above ground. Now, while this is happening on stage, there's a bunch of chaos, lots of conversations going on, I believe. There's some back and forth going on. And then Carlotta returns and she is pissed off because she has heard that Christine is to be the new prima donna for the upcoming opera. The opera employees try and calm her down and say, it's just a rumor, it's not true, you're going to be the prima donna, don't worry about it, you're the main singer for the premiere of this opera. Next scene shifts and it is the premiere of this opera and Carlotta is indeed the prima donna. Well, the Phantom is not too excited about this and puts a spell on her voice to where she cannot sing or produce a beautiful sound. Carlotta storms off stage, is super angry, and this is the perfect moment where Christine comes in and takes over her place. Well, not everything goes according to plan because Soon, a corpse appears, I think from the ceiling or somewhere, and causes a bunch of chaos. And again, we have another production that is not going to plan. While all of this chaos is going on, Christine rushes off stage, goes to the rooftop where she meets Raoul. And she tells Raoul about her encounter with the Phantom in his lair. Now, Raoul being Raoul, who obviously loves Christine, listens to her conversation and also tries to let her know how much affection he has for her. And that is where we have arrived with this duet, All I Ask of You. Now, spoiler alert, just after this duet, the Phantom overhears Raoul and Christine's conversation, gets upset and plots revenge against Christine. Then the chandelier drops and breaks and that becomes the chandelier from the auction from the prologue now kelly clarkson oh my god she is such a star her voice is very pop like when you listen to kelly clarkson that is like a true classic pop sound and it's one of the best she's just got a fantastic easy register when using her mixed voice and her chest voice and then as you heard beautifully here she's got great control of her head voice that being said this is still a musical theater slash opera composition so i was curious how that was going to fit into this production the 
main performance that I have to compare to this is the one with Emmy Rossum and Patrick Wilson, I think is his last name. And in that performance, Emmy sings most of the beginning part where she comes in in head voice. In comparison, this performance, Callie, being the crazy talented pop singer that she is, knows how to use her chest voice and my god is she bringing it to this performance. It's like night and day in terms of analyzing vocal production. For example, the very first line, say you'll love me every waking moment. I do wish she didn't breathe between waking and moment, but that's okay. Say you love me. Right from here, you really hear her bring in some chest voice and she continues to bring that chest voice into the phrase up until waking moment, actually. Say you love me every waking moment. That is so different compared to what you may have heard from Emmy Rossum. I think it's important to notice because you can then analyze the different performances and the different types of singers and understand what sound you're getting. Kelly Clarkson is very known for a powerful, easy sounding voice. As a result, you're going to get a little bit more chest, a lot more chest voice in most of her performances, let's say, considered to Emmy Rossum, who is not known as a pop singer like Kelly Clarkson. That's not to take away from either performances, it's just to analyze and compare the two to see what is being done differently, and as a result, what is the vocal production. My goodness, does Josh Groban have such a perfect voice for this piece. His voice is dreamy, it's velvety, it's legato, it's smooth, it's rich. It just sounds like the perfect protagonist lover for Christine. He is approaching the onset of his phrases with relative ease. And I've said this in a video before, but onsets are pretty difficult to just feel comfortable in. <sighs> sounds amazing. Not only that, his pronunciation Oh, it's so good. I that I expect that, of course, from Josh Groban, but it's just fantastic to hear the consistency throughout. I really love how much vibrato he put on the word guard, and this is a phrase right before Kelly Clarkson comes in. I liked that because it brought a different nuance to the phrase, something maybe I wasn't really sure of before. For a man to say to a woman, I'm going to guard you, I'm going to guide you, I'm going to be your protector, it takes a lot of confidence to say that convincingly. And the amount of resonance and shape that was brought to that one specific word, I think was a nice touch because I didn't really get that sense right from the beginning because it's just, let's say such a pretty sound. We're just so focused on the prettiness of his voice and the prettiness of what is going on. But at the end of the day, he is trying to make his stance to say, I want you to be mine. Let me be your freedom. Let daylight dry your tears. I'm here with you beside you to guard you and to guide you. You know, it's not easy to say something like that and put out that much vulnerability, especially to Christine, who kind of right now seems all over the place. You know, she went from Chorus Girl to Prima Donna, and she's being asked to join these big productions very last minute. She's talking about a phantom who he's never seen before, and she seems intrigued by all of this mystery going on, and it's, it's just a lot going on for Christine. So for him to just express all of this vulnerability, it takes a lot of guts. So I'm glad I got somewhat of that stance of where he's trying to go with this conversation in terms of who he is as a character. Now, let's see how that progresses in this performance. Say you need me with you now and always promise me that all you say That's all I ask of you. Let me be your shelter. 
Let me be your light, your safe. No one will find you. Your fears are far behind you. All I want is freedom, a world with no more night. And you always beside me to hold me and to hide me. Say you want me with you here beside you Anywhere you go, let me go too That's all I ask of Say you Oh my god, Kelly is just such a light. She is just amazing. Josh Groban, fantastic. I thought that this whole production was so dreamy. I was really drawn into the production. They put so much effort in the production. The background, the lighting, the colors, the placement of the piano, the placement of the orchestra. All of that takes so much work and it's easy to not understand the amount of effort that goes into something like this. Like you, you get there and you just see this wow factor and you're just so entranced by the beauty of it. But to take the time to understand the dedication that it took to organize all of that, I've got to give a huge, huge shout out to stage manager, production manager, everyone who was a part of putting the setting together made so much of a difference to the actual performance. There was a look in Kelly Clarkson's face when she said to hold me and to hide me, I believe, something along those lines. But the way that she just had her eyes locked in on Mr. Grobin brought so much innocence to that phrase to me. Um, even though she's still singing with a fairly powerful voice. It's not full-on chest voice, but it is very present because she's so in tune with her voice. All I want is freedom, a world with no more light. And you always beside me to hold me and to hide me. But the amount of innocence, just that look, the facial that she chose to give in that moment was so, so nice to see. I, I really thought that it, it actually made me see a bit more depth within the character in that moment. If you liked all that you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and comment down below what piece by your favorite artist you would like me to do a performance on next. Lastly, make sure you check out the description box for ways you can keep in touch with me, get access to exclusive perks, check out the Soprano Notes blog, and or take a lesson with me. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye!